The King Edward Triangle is going to have Liverpool's tallest building constructed on it, if the plans don't go the same way as these failed ones from the past. But why is it called the King Edward Triangle? Where is it? What's there now? And what does it have in common with the Bermuda Triangle? This behind me is one of the most pivotal and high value pieces of land in the whole of Liverpool. Why? Because uh, it's quite close to the centre. Recognise it? Uh, it's going to have a number of tall buildings built on it. That's the plan. And they'll be taller than any other buildings in Liverpool. But the site is actually already surrounded by tall buildings. There's the Beetham Tower, West Tower, and the ones on Prince's Dock, Lexington, and the one I've been tracking, Patagonia Place. And there's one very famous tower, one of the first tall buildings in the UK, which you'll recognise, uh, the Liver Building. And so, what's the name of this place? We have the Baltic Triangle, then there's the Bermuda Triangle in the North Atlantic. But this area is called the King Edward Triangle. It's just next to the junction of Leeds Street and Great Howard Street. I've driven past here from the waterfront heading east many times. The big news is that the Beetham organisation and retailer TJ Morris have created a joint venture which acquired the King Edward Triangle Industrial Estate from Peel Waters. They intend to build a cluster of tall buildings on the site and one of them is set to become Liverpool's tallest ever skyscraper. TJ Morris was founded by Tom Morris, owner of Home Bargains. But why is it called the King Edward Triangle? Well, it's where the King Edward pub used to stand. It was torn down in 2007 to make way for a gigantic new tower that was never built. It was going to be called the King Edward Tower. But which King Edward? There have been 11 King Edwards down the centuries. I presume it was King Edward VII whose name was used for the Edwardian period. As Prince of Wales, he married Alexandra of Denmark in 1863. Eldest son and second child of Queen Victoria, he was King of the United Kingdom and the British Dominions and Emperor of India from the 22nd of January 1901 until his death in 1910. The Liver Building clocks were started at the precise time that Edward's son, George V, was crowned on the 22nd of June 1911. But I digress. The King Edward Triangle is still a bit of a mystery. Oh, and there's also King Edward Street, which forms part of that major road between the waterfront and points east, the A5052 leading to the A5053. So what is currently on the King Edward Triangle? It's basically a small industrial estate with a variety of businesses, some quite interesting. There's a gym, two breweries, a bakery and some industrial units. The businesses seem to be doing well, shame they have to be relocated. But the developers have said they will help with the move. So who are the developers? They are the Beetham Organization, a property development and investment company dating back to a company founded by Hugh Frost in the 80s. His son, Stephen Beetham, became famous as one of the youngest property developers in the UK. He was behind the Beetham Tower in Manchester, which I'll be featuring in a video soon. 20 years on, Beetham is making a comeback in Liverpool. They are the ones behind the new tower. So what's it going to look like? We don't know yet, but I heard someone mention a project in London, One Nine Elms. So I've made a very rough visualization of how things might look in a few years time. What the tower will actually look like remains to be seen. Brock Carmichael have been nominated as master plan architects. So that's the story. Industrial estate near Waterfront to have new towers built on it. But there's more to it than that. This area, like the Bermuda Triangle, is a place of mystery and intrigue in a corner of the city with some notable tall buildings but there are also some failed and now mostly forgotten ones more about those later but first let's have a quick look at the most recent tall buildings around Princess Dock just next door that's the east facade of Patagonia Place which is nearing its full height after it commenced construction at the beginning of this year there's the row of structures facing onto Prince's Dock. On the left is one Prince's Dock, 2006, 73 metres or 240 feet by AFL Architects. Then it's Patagonia Place, Faulkner Chester Hall, 95 metres or 351 feet.
Here are the stages of construction so far. It's amazing how quickly they can build tall buildings these days. Next to it, Plaza 1821 by Hodder and Partners, completed in 2020, and the Lexington, which opened in 2021, designed by Fort Chester Hall. And moored at the cruise liner terminal, its Disney Dream launched 2012, built by the Maya Werft in Germany. It's 380 meters or 1,115 feet long, a kind of floating ground scraper. If it was upended, it would be the tallest structure in Liverpool, just imagine. But there's one building at the top of Prince's Dock with a sloping roof and curved sides. It had a few problems, but it seems to have weathered the wind and rain coming off the River Mersey pretty well. Alexandra Tower, AFL Architects, 2005 to 2008. Named after Alexandra, wife of Edward? Well, I assumed it's named after Alexandra Dock, up in the Northern Docks. Named after Alexandra of Denmark. There's a tanker on its way towards the Irish Sea. We're looking over the abandoned landing stage where a futuristic new cruise liner terminal is planned. But that's another story. Now let's take a quick overview of the towers on the eastern flank of the King Edward Triangle. And later we're going to look at those buildings that might have been, if only. That's the Beetham Tower on the right, the Liverpool Beetham Tower, designed by Ian Simpson. It's a residential building with a curved facade facing the river. People have said that it's a one-sided building that only looks out towards the Mersey. It's 90 metres or 300 feet tall and was completed in 2004. It looks quite thin from the side. Styles seem to have moved on since then. West Tower remains the tallest building in Liverpool. 40 storeys, 140 metres, 459 feet, designed by IDAS, an international architectural practice who are big in Asia, they were the lead consultant on Marina Bay Sands in Singapore. West Tower looks modest by comparison, but with its curved facades and a sloping roof, you can't just say it's a box. Around the base, windows reach further out above the street. Like the Beetham Tower, West Tower faces the river, though it seems to have a 180 degree field of view. The former Royal and Sun Alliance building, now Newhall Place, is next door, completed in 1974, 73 metres or 240 feet tall. Along Old Hall Street you'll see the attractive mercantile buildings of the past. But in Liverpool, as in Manchester, traditional coexists with modern as here. That's the Unity Building, 86 metres or 282 feet, completed in 2007. The tower is residential. The smaller building next door contains offices. I'd love to visit those penthouses at the top. The next building is significant. It's one of the first and tallest post-war office buildings in Liverpool. Completed in 1965, it's 65 metres or 213 feet tall. It once dominated the skyline. It was originally called the Sir John Moores building, named after the founder of the Littlewoods Pools. It's 125 metres or 410 feet long, making it more of a ground scraper than a skyscraper. It's now owned by Bruntwood. Is it as important and groundbreaking as the Liver building, completed half a century earlier? I'll leave you to decide. Let's return to the junction of Lead Street and Great Howard Street and take another look at that curved glass building. Now look at this pair of residential buildings. There's the Sir John Moores building on the left, the plaza, and we see two oval-shaped towers of different heights. The taller one, 87 metres, 285 feet, 27 floors. No glass boxes here. They look like they could be in Chicago or Singapore. Ovatus 1 and 2. They are the work of Hodder and Partners. The plans were drawn up in the 2000s, but the project failed to go ahead. They would have replaced that curved glass building, and they seem to have taken their inspiration from it. A lot of work must have gone into the design. Those visualizations are impressive. Hodder and Partners did the new design for the tower at St. Michael's in Manchester. Now let's look at the area just across Leeds Street. This is one of the designs proposed for the site of the King Edward pub. A complex and many faceted design, definitely not just a glass box. Tall, high-tech, science fiction-like, 
This could be Shanghai. This is the work of Leech Road's Walker Architects, but it was rejected. Another design was created by Manchester-based architect Morris Shapiro, that's with ERO. He did the metallic 42nd Street building in Manchester I featured previously. The cross seems too strong to me as an icon, but the architect defended his design. And then we cross Great Howard Street, past the car dealership, and imagine this shiny glass and metal trio of towers of uneven height. This is, or would have been, infinity. The tallest tower would have risen to 123 metres or 404 feet, 39 floors, with V-shaped supports at the base, a glass facade, zigzag at the top, a much more complex design than most of today's new buildings. It was designed by Faulkner Chester Hall. Again, how much time, effort and designer power went into this project, which commenced construction, but then the developer, Elliot, went bust. If these projects had completed, this area could have been Liverpool's skyscraper corner. I wonder how architects feel when their projects don't go ahead. Will the new Beetham Tower for the King Edward Triangle end up going the same way? I'll be watching progress and tracking the construction when, or if, it goes ahead. Please give me a like, subscribe, share and comment, respectfully please. As always, this video took a fair amount of time to capture, research, write, edit and check. I hope I've not made any mistakes. So if you could buy me a coffee, that would be great. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und auf Wiedersehen in Liverpool.